So desktop scanners are, are, are cool once you start getting into dentures a little bit. That's kind of the area where they seem to be the most beneficial. Everything else you can kind of do without, you know, guides and splints and all that stuff is mostly just tooth borin. But once you get into needing like vestibules of stuff, you can get the desktop scanners. Um, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not absolutely needed, but it's a lot of a few conveniences, you know, scanning impressions and just sending it to the lab right away. Cut off maybe a few days of shipping or whatnot. Little things here and there that um, are cool. So we've been using the, the Blue Sky desktop scanner which is, as far as I know, really the cheapest one on the market. So, you know, the, the big nice one is the Medit desktop scanner. It's like 12,000. The Shining 3D scan, I think this is what our lab uses. I was talking to Frank, he uses the Shining. You know, that's five to $7,000 for that one. And then the Blue Sky one is 3,000. And I would say that, um, I would say that it's, it excels in, in accuracy, produces accurate models. Um, it is affordable. Um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be weaker in the area of like just build quality. Like it's kind of just simple looking. Like it's pretty basic. And then software um, polish is, is, is weaker. So it just kind of depends on what you want. I mean, it's worked fine for us. We've, you know, we've, we've put it through multiple, you know, full hybrid, you know, hybrid workflows, whether it's scanning, you know, scan bodies on a master cast or scanning, you know, their temporaries. And it's provided accurate, passive, bars, hybrid. So we know we've put it through accuracy tests and it's been good. Um, it's just a little bit simple, simplistic. So, I mean, I, we're, we're happy with it. Um, we haven't found like we needed to get anything fancier. It's a little slower, you know, sometimes the software's you know, a little bit clunky. Um, I'm gonna pull. I'll pull it up here and, and show you a scan. Um, but it's a cool little. It's a cool little scanner. It um. It comes with. So this is kind of the stuff it comes with. It's got a plate with blue putty on it um, that you can literally just stick models into it. You can stick dentures into it. Um, you can get you know 360 degree denture scans. So it makes an STL of that denture. Um, you can put triple trays into it, you know, if, I don't know, I guess if your Itero was busted one day and you had to take an impression, you could throw it in there, I don't know. Um, you can scan bite registrations. For us, it's mostly scanning uh, impressions for dentures, full existing dentures, um, and then maybe like master casts for like hybrids. Like, yeah, yeah, pickups for hybrids and stuff if you're doing... You can pick up hybrids and put analogs on them. And, and so stuff like that is what we're mostly using it for. Um, the, the, the key thing with a desktop scanner is like it's the field of view is deeper than an intraoral scanner. So an intraoral scanner is meant to be just a one-inch field of view. That's why when you like take the scanner up off the tooth, it gets lost. It stops scanning. But the second you get it within an inch of that tooth, it, it picks up again and it realizes it. Which is good because if you had a six inch field of view, every time you moved it, it's going to scan the tongue and the cheek and just start scanning everything in the mouth it sees. So it's a very narrow field of view. But that's not, it's not good when you want to scan you know, a, a large surface like a denture and have it be accurate because by the time you're traveling across over a surface, it's getting lost because it's just taking so many photos and just stitching them together. And so that's why the desktop scanners give you this like, step back field of view and a bunch of pictures from a distance so you can scan bigger objects more accurately. Um, this can give you STLs, PLYs, and OBJs, so you can do color in black and white. Um, you can scan, those are the different things that you can scan. You can kind of see some of the scan times, you know, anywhere from a minute and a half for just a stone model, all the way down to five minutes for a triple tray. So this is a slower machine, but you know, you kind of get what you pay for, and it's, it's fine. It gets the job done. So three and, a half, three and a half minutes or so for a denture. So if you stick a denture in there, you know, it takes about three and a half minutes to scan it. And it scans, um, so with most scanners, um, stone and PVS scan great. Like, accurate, really clear, good detail, surface texture. Acrylic. And metal, so stuff that's shiny, is, is too reflective. Even, even just simple 
denture acrylic has a reflection to it. And so that scanner, that light, it, you know, it, it doesn't accurately scan. So you got to knock the shine off of the object. So you can buy fancy scan powder or use good old fashioned foot powder. Yeah. Have you used this too? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So we'll just, you know, spray the denture, um, or the analogs if you're scanning metal with just with something that's going to knock the shine off and then you can put it through, through the denture. So just simple foot powder, um, works, works good as a cheap, a cheap scan powder. Um, let's see what else, you know, the other thing I was going to say too, that's cool about cool thing about doing your digital interim dentures, right? So you go through the work, you design a digital interim denture, patients healing, and you bring them back in two months for like conventional dentures and you're like, oh, okay, I'm ready to do their final and go to a lab, which is what I typically do. You go, oh, they're coming in. You reprint, you go back to your printer and you reprint the same denture in model white and they come in and that's your wash impression. And so you just duplicate the denture that you made them originally and they come in you take your wash impression and your bite and your photos, send it to a lab. No more work, no work. And they don't, and they don't have to give you their denture and let you keep that. That's huge. Yeah. That is huge. So that's a really cool time saver. Um, and, you know, even if you're like, you know what, I've got a lab, it's doing dentures, it's working well for me, do I really want to, like, go through all this? Even, what we'll even do is if they have a denture, you can scan it, box scan it, um, print a duplicate and then just I've got a duplicate cheap resin denture take your final impression in that they never have to leave their denture with you and they you don't have to go pour it up say hey wait for a couple hours I'm going to pour it up and mount it you know you can literally just duplicate it bite and wash impression send it off the lab so you know patients don't really know how to appreciate that but it's a it's a nice it's That's a nice feature yeah, I gotta leave my denture. Yeah, and so easy to Wear duplicate them. What's that? Wear a mask. Mm. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so. Charge them hundred dollars to scan digitally after you've made it. I store a digital file with their denture, and they will break their future denture. Right. Yeah. Like some sort of denture warranty, and you can make it today, or you know. Yeah. You, you know. don't have to go through any steps, right? Yeah. Well, I guess if their bone is shifted or something, you might want to wash it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, a lot of cool a lot little, of storage, right? a lot of cool little applications just to digital dentistry. Just you think about little, little hacks, clinical hacks. Mm-hmm.